Tonight I'm going to take you for a little bit of a tour around this uh, this latest cell that I've put together. Actually, this is this is the original tall zero cell that I put back into service. Uh, I rinsed it out a few times after passivating it in citrus surf, which is really concentrated citric acid. <coughs> and uh, when you passivate, you dilute you dilute the solution 10%. So 10 to 1 you dilute it in distilled water and you create a, a tank to submerge the plates in and after doing so I had a real problem with foaming inside the canister and what was happening was the foam was actually rising in th up through the tank right right up to the top of the lid coming out pushing out the the tube and into the bubbler and it was actually uh, losing quite a bit of electrolyte that way pushing a lot of the fluid right down the tube into the bubbler and if you look down here this is the level indicator of the bubbler and the level indicator would actually rise with all the additional fluid that was getting getting trapped in the bubbler uh, right here you see I have my poor man's DC amp meter shunt it is one millivolt per amp so for every uh, for every amp, there is one one thousandth of a volt voltage drop. It's very, very small, so it doesn't end up Im impacting the overall voltage that reaches the terminals on the top of the cell. Now, at the top of the cell, I want you to see. Mm, let me get a pen here. Point this out a little better. This yellow terminal right here, and this green one are the two terminals that come down and around to this voltmeter. This is an auto ranging voltmeter so anytime I change from the uh, battery terminals or from the from the cell terminals to the amp meter shunt it automatically auto ranges to the correct uh, to the correct range. However I also have my secondary meter which is measuring the millivolts across the amp meter shunt in real time. So I get both the uh, current draw on the yellow meter and the voltage measured directly at the cell terminals on the orange digital multimeter. This is the uh, bubbler that I created inside uh, for inside the car. It is 2 inch PVC with an end cap on the bottom, a clean out cap on the top, and a clean out threaded plug with three barbed fittings okay this is the inlet fitting this is the outlet fitting over here on the right and on the, on the left is the fitting for the tube for the tube that shows the level indicator of course I have the HHometer right here <coughs> and we're gonna run a couple of tests here for you tonight Now you may notice that I have a little bit more bench space than I did previously. Let me just uh, line this up so that it shows up a little bit better on the camera. There we go. Uh, I reached my clutter saturation level yesterday and spent most of my day yesterday completely reorganizing my bench, trying to recapture some some bench space on, on this uh, postage stamp that I call a research lab. Uh, anyway, what I didn't show you was the uh, AC to DC full wave bridge and the filter capacitor that is also tied to the top of the cell and I have a 12 volt regulated DC supply that can only supply so much current and when I want to supplement that I can I can boost the current and the voltage at the cell, at the cell up just a little bit more to to change the results of what I'm getting of the gas that I'm producing so I'm going to turn it on and immediately you see the uh, the first wave of bubbles create a wave front and it just sort of uh, it, it, it it circulates so quickly that it creates a backlash and then if and then it fills the tank completely the circulation runs out of the top of the plate stack down the outside and back up through the middle of the stack all and just keeps a circulating current that way that's also how it keeps itself very cool inside the car. This cell runs so cool that I, I have problems getting it up to temperature where it runs most efficiently. How's that for an interesting dilemma? Now you'll notice I'm drawing 13.5 amps which is 
showing 13.5 thousandths of a volt voltage drop across the DC power shunt. One of the disadvantages to this type of shunt is the uh, the copper wire that I'm using, any copper wire, has what they call a positive temperature coefficient, meaning as the temperature of the copper rises, the resistance increases in proportion to that. I mean, very, very small, but it does have an impact. Now, my hand, I've been out here all evening, and my hands are pretty darn cold. And you see right now, it's showing 13.6 amp. Now, watch what happens when I just put my fingers on the, on the, uh, on the shunt, and right away you see it drop a couple of tenths. All right, because it got slightly warm with the, with this amount of current going through it. And before I forget, I want to show you the the bubbling and the foaming problem that I was talking to you about earlier. Okay, this is looking into the cell. I'm telling you right now, this is producing almost a liter a minute right here. Come on, this side, you mean the lighting's... There we go. That's a very good shot right there. Okay. Now, the first time that I had a problem with the with the foaming... It was literally like dish detergent suds, very fine bubbles. It rose very high. Um, these bubbles get pretty large and they and they break. I don't know if this is the normal behavior for for potassium hydroxide or not. Um, but when when this cell gets really cooking, you know, really cranking, putting out gas, which it is doing right now, um, that's what I get. And the more current that I put in there, the faster it rises, and then I start getting some coming out through the uh, the outlet tube and into the bubbler. Okay, so anyway, back to the experiment. Um, right now we're showing 14 amps. I'm going to put my hands on here, cool it down just a hair, and you see it drop 13.9, 13.8. Thirteen point seven because I'm cooling it down. It's only slightly warm to the touch. I should have probably used twelve gauge wire instead of fourteen, but that's what I had laying around immediately available so it's it's good for making relative measurements. It's not perfectly accurate like a like a uh, scientific instrument d c shunt would be. But it's great for sticking under the hood in the car and, and sending a pair of speaker wires into the engine compartment so that you can monitor the, the current inside the car in terms of millivolts rather than trying to send all, f all of these ampers through such a long, a long wire where you would get a large voltage drop. So we've got uh, four... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to subtract the inaccuracy that I know is there. I'm going to say I've got 14.0 amps and I have 13.12 volts. Get the stopwatch. And one, two, three. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see that very well. Twenty seconds, anyway. Thirty seconds. All right, first bubble is about to emerge from the neck. Forty-two seconds. So I'm going to say I had an average of fourteen point one amps at thirteen point twelve volts. Okay, so that's one hundred eighty-five watts. I produced five hundred milliliters in forty-two seconds. That is 714 milliliters per minute, uh, almost three quarters of a liter per minute, and uh, that is 3.89 milliliters per minute per watt for this experiment.